pinipilit ng tao na para magkaroon ka ng wealth physically, pinipilit nila yung physical. Nagpapakahirap sila sa physical. Kaya kung gusto mong bumuo ng physical na magandang resulta, mag-umpisa ka talaga spiritual. Kaya yung yaman din, ganun din eh. Basta iniisip mo ng gusto yun, no? At Oo. magmamanifest talaga yun. Hanggat hindi mo naiisip yung imahe ng isip mo, Oo. lalabas wala kang isip. Lalabas, hindi mo talaga siya nagagamit. Halimbawa na, sa pera, yung pagkita ng 1,000 sa pagkita <laughs> ng 10,000, magkaibang level. Yun. Pagka palugi ka naman, pababa ka, laki ng palaki utang mo, parami ng parami yung kasalanan mo. Pababa naman ang enerhiya mo. Yun. Hindi mo yun mauunawaan hanggat wala kang imahe ng isip mo. Now, I'm gonna put a couple of marks on the board and I want you to really think seriously about this. You know, human organizations as we know them today are not going to last much longer. And that is because they have been, we have built them on a false premise. These organizations have been built on the premise that you and I are physical beings, and we're really not. We are spiritual beings living in physical bodies. And we've been gifted with something called an intellect. Yung salita na yun ni Bob Proctor na ano. Alam niya rin mismo eh na yung paniniwala ng mga organisasyon dyan sa panahon na yun. Hanggang ngayon kasi yun pa rin ang paniniwala nalalaman ng ng karamihan oo lalo na malalaking organisasyon kasi eh, halimbawa na natin no sa katawan kasi physical yung katawan natin eh mm-hmm. halimbawa meron kang sakit oo ang ginagamot ng mga doktor yung physical na katawan oo pero diyan ipinakikita niya na hindi yun yung pinakadahilan hindi yun yung punot dulo oo hindi yun punot dulo meron pa kaya tuloy natin yan sige and by learning to use the intellectual factors in our personality we can tap into the higher side of our own nature and improve anything in our physical world but you know to the average person that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense and it may not make a whole lot of sense to you as I just said it but you're going to find as we go along with this and as we keep working with this idea It's going to make an awful lot of sense to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I have found... Sinabi niya doon, di ba? Tungkol sa physical. Mm-hmm. Tayo, pinipilit natin yung physical na, halimbawa, kanina sabi ko, yung sa kalusugan. Oh. Inalimbawa niya naman sa wealth, physical wealth. Oh, physical wealth. Dahil physical din yun oh. eh. Pinipilit ng tao na para magkaroon ka ng wealth physically, eh. pinipilit nila yung physical. Nagpapakahirap sila sa physical. Mm. Di ba? Para makamit nila yung physical wealth. Oo. Ngayon ang nangyayari doon, tensionado yung katawan mo kasi physical to physical ang ginagawa Oo. mo eh. Yung physical, gusto mo maging resulta ng physical din. Oo. Pero dyan, pinakikita niya na hindi yun ang dahilan. Kung gusto mo magkaroon ng physical na resulta ng wealth o kaya naman kalusugan, hindi, hindi ka, ka dun magsisimula. Hindi ka dun magsisimula sa physical. Oo. Kaya sinabi niya palang kanina, ang human organization sa ngayon ay nakatayo o nakapundasyon sa maling paniniwala. Oo. Kasi unang-una, yung example nga ng Biblia, eh, di ba? Yung physical world, di ba? Itong mundo, hindi naman ito naitayo sa pamagitan ng physical eh. Tama. Di ba? Galing sa hindi naikita. O galing sa spiritual. Spiritual. Kaya kung gusto mong bumuo ng physical na magandang resulta, mag-umpisa ka talaga spiritual. Oo. Kaya ang ganda talaga ng paliwanag ni ano ni ni Gold ni Myron eh, no? Oo. Uh, na yung nakikita natin ngayon eh ang tawag nito, resulta ng resulta ng mga bagay na no? hindi nakikita. Oo. Limbawa, no? may sakit ka ngayon, resulta yan noon nung nung spiritual na Oo. kung ano man yung minamanifest mo noon. Gaya ng mga cellphone ngayon, eh noon wala pa yan eh. Diba wala parang pa. nasa isip pa lang ng tao yan eh. Oo, no, iniisip diba? pa lang iniisip ng tao. Iniisip pa lang nila yan eh. Aeroplano. Yo, aeroplano. Kaya yung yaman din, ganun din eh. Basta iniisip mo ng gusto yun, no? At Oo. magmamanifest talaga yun. Pagdating naman sa sakit, sa isip din talaga nagsisimula yung kagalingan. Oo, yun. Diba? Galing ano? Parang tinalakay dyan eh, no? Oo, tinalakay niya yan dyan. Pero magkakaroon din tayo ng ano, yung si, si, Bukod. Sayo, si Dr. Joe Dispenza. Magkakaroon yun, yung pag- yeah, ang yun, yun, panibagong bisita pala. Oo. Tungkol naman yun talaga sa kalusugan. Gamit ang isip. Gamit naman ang isip. Yun. Ito naman, dito naman tayo, ano to eh, si, si Bob Proctor, more on ano to eh. More on wealth tsaka prosperity. Wealth and prosperity. Oo. Parang personal development din eh, no? Oo, kasama lahat. Pag sinabi mo kasing personal development, lahat, lahat yan eh. eh. Oo, physical, spiritual, spiritual lahat mental. Yan. Oo. Pag naunawaan mo yun, susunod lahat ng mga gusto mong makamtan eh. 
Oh, totoo yun. O, oh, sige, tuloy natin. Marami tayong matututunan dito. When we start to study ourselves, there's only two points of reference we can go to. One is science, and the other is theology. There doesn't seem to be anywhere else to go. I have found that there are only six basic religions. Now, I spent quite a bit of time living and working in California. I think there's something like 4,000 religions in California, but <laughs> everybody starts their own out there because there's tax breaks, you see. So, <laughs> but you're still going to find there's just six basic religions, and they all teach us essentially the same thing. They teach us that we are non-physical beings. They may use a different word, but the concept is the same. Do you know it's a strange thing? Most people don't even know much about their own religion, and yet they say mine's right and all the rest are wrong, and they don't even know what the others are. I have found that every one of them has the truth in it. We are non-physical beings. See, the truth is something like the center of town. It really doesn't matter which side you approach it from. When you get there, you're in the same place. Now, the other area that we might want to look at is science. Science tells you your energy. As a matter of fact, a DuPont scientist many years ago said that the electrons and the atoms of your body contain a potential energy of more than 11 million kilowatt hours per pound. Do you know that there's enough potential energy locked up in that thing that you're sitting in that we call a body to light up this whole North American continent for nearly a week? And then you'll hear people say, I haven't got any energy. <laughs> What a ridiculous statement. That's all. <laughs> yun parang katawan natin, energy na yun, you know. Grabe nga, you know. Kaya pala, kaya, kaya pala lagi sa atin sinasabi na, anong walang lakas? <laughs> diba? Yung mismo katawan mo, lakas yun. Eh. <laughs> Oo. Oras na nakikita mo pa yung katawan mo, nakikita mo pa yan, mayroong lakas. Oo, may lakas. Isipin mo yung ganun kalit na enerhiya, yung isang buong katawan ng tao kaya mo. Grabe, no? Kaya mag-supply ng kuryente sa buong Amerika. <laughs> oh. Isang tao. Sabihin, napakalakas ng enerhiyang nilagay sa atin ng Diyos. Oo. Oh. Hindi lang talaga natin nabubuksan yung buong potential. Oo. Oh. We are as a mass of energy. Do you know this thing you're living in vibrates? It glows. As a matter of fact, there is an aura of energy around your body. That is the cells leaving your body. Your body changes at the rate of about 50,000 cells per second. And as the bo- as cells leave the body, new ones are created. And you know you can photograph the energy leaving the body. Semyon Kurlian, way back in the uh, early 30s, perfected a form of photography where he could take and photograph mass and the rays of energy coming from the body would penetrate the camera, penetrate the film, and you'd actually catch it on the, on the film. And you'd photograph the density and the color of it. Galing, ano? I would imagine you're very familiar with this, are you, honey? That's right. And you know, as the... Okay, yung mga pinapanood natin sa mga Dragon Ball, ano? Oo. Oh. Ano yun eh, parang magaling yung ano nun eh, yung mga... Hindi lang sa Dragon Ball, sa lahat ng mga anime na pinapanood natin. Yung mga may nag-charge yung katawan. Oo. Oh. Totoo pala yun. Oo. Oh. Hindi lang talaga natin makita ng bare eye natin, ano? Hindi makita. Kailangan mo gumamit ng mga photographic. Oo. Oh. Material. Ang magaling din dun, yung mga writer ng mga ganun. The image in a person's mind changes, the vibration of their body changes, and the density and the color of this energy changes, and changes dramatically. Do you know you've even got a mental faculty where you can start to feel that energy coming from a person, and you can determine the mood they're in very, very quickly. You can virtually read what's going on inside an individual. Now, as we study this, we're going to find that this side and this side is actually all hooked up. Think of this for a second. You see sitting here on the lectern a glass of water. Now, let's stop and think about this for a moment. We call that glass. It's actually energy. Because of the speed it's vibrating at, we call it glass. We call this water. That's what it is. It's water. But it's actually energy too. As a matter of fact, the ring that's hitting it is energy. And the finger that the ring is on is energy. Everything's energy. Everything vibrates at a different speed. But stay with me here for a moment. What we're talking about here is energy. Now, while the energy is in the vibratory rate it's in, in that glass, we're going to call it water. And we call it water because it's vibrating at a physical or a corporeal state. If you were to add heat to that energy that we call water, you wouldn't call it water anymore. Then you would change the terminology that you would use. It would be the same energy, but it would be moving faster in a higher speed of vibration. Then we would call it steam or vapor. 
And we would call the energy steamer vapor because it's not in a physical vibration. It's now moved into what we call an astral vibration. If we were to continue to add heat to that energy that we now call steam, you wouldn't call it steam any longer. You would call it air, ether, or gas. And that's because it's not in an astral vibration any longer. It's moved into now what we call an etheric vibration. Bravino. But every level, it's the same energy. Now as we take... Unong level, physical. Physical. Sunod, astro. Astral. Astral, ano? Mm. Pag sinabi bang astral, ano ibig sabihin nun? Iiba siya ng anyo na mas magaan siya at mas mabilis. Oo. Kasi iba-iba nga ang level ng ano eh. Energy. Frequency ng energy eh. Oo. Yung pinapaliwanag dyan ni Bob Proctor na itong nakikita natin, wala namang nawawala dito eh. Wala. Nagbabago, nagbabago lang. Ng, pag nagbago na eh, ibig sabihin nagbabago ng frequency. Ang gustong ipayag dito ni Bob Proctor, sa totoo lang, kung ikaw mahirap, hmm. Pwede kang magbago. Babago yung may frequency. Yun. Mo, yun pwede ano, mong idug... Yun pala yun talaga. <laughs> yun, yun yung pinapaliwanag yun. niya, no? Oo. Oh, yeah, kaya lang dyan, ipinaliliwanag niya yung physical na... Hinihimay-himay niya. Oh. Totoo yun. Kaya nga Exciting itong oh. pag-usapan, no? Dito kasi, ang talagang target natin dito yung image ng isip natin. Oo. Oh, oh. Kasi hanggat hindi mo naiisip yung imahe ng isip mo... Oo. Lalabas wala kang isip. Lalabas, hindi mo talaga siya nagagamit. Hindi mo siya nagagamit. Kaya dito, parang binivisualize niya yung bawat nangyayari sa tuwing Yun. meron kang gagawing pagbabago. Oo. Na bawat pagbabago mo, may mga level yan. Oo. Halimbawa na lang, sa pera, yung pagkita ng 1,000 sa pagkita <laughs> ng 10,000, magkaibang level yun. Oo. Pero, parang parehas lang. lang. Pare, pareho lang Pares energy, lang. kaya Oo. lang, yung disiplina sa 1,000 pesos na pagkita mo, pag kumikita ka na ng 10,000, iba rin iba na disiplina doon. Habang tumataas yun, nag-iiba rin yung disiplina. Ganon din yung enerhiya. Oo, ganon. Kaya nga kapag ka, palugi ka naman, pababa, palaki ng palaki utang mo, parami ng parami mm-hmm. yung kasalanan mo, pababa naman ang enerhiya mo. Yun. Yan ang pinaliliwanag dito ni Bob Proctor. Ngayon, hindi mo yun mauunawaan hanggat wala kang imahe ng isip mo. Kasi dito, yung isip talaga ang gagalaw sa atin eh. Oo. Doon magsisimula oo, talaga. Yun ang makakakita ng mga pagbabago. Ngayon, kung hindi mo makita yung isip mo, paano mo makikita yung pagbabago mo? Oo. Hindi kung hindi yun, mo alam kung paano gumagana yun by level. Oo, by level. Okay, tuloy natin. Take a look at this. We're going to let these lines represent levels of vibration. Or, as we more commonly refer to them, as frequencies. Ano mo dyan? And you... Gusto ko doon dagdag yung, di ba, pinag-usapan natin yung isip. Oo. Na kung i-convert mo yung ganitong klase ng analogy, yung isip natin kasi may mga level. Yung mm-hmm. mismong isip natin may level yun. Mula conscious hanggang subconscious. Oo. Yun yung gusto niya rin dyan, yan, ano, na may app. May kita natin yun. You know, each frequency is hooked up to the one above and the one below. There's no line of demarcation where one stops and the other starts. See, every frequency, it's like the colors of a rainbow. As they fit together, there's no place... Wala, eh. Wala kang makikitang dugtungan nun eh. Wala. Basta makita mo nalang... Unti-unting nagbabago. Unti-unti siya nagbabago ng kulay, ano? Oo. Oh. Ganon din yung, ano, frequency. Galing talaga ng konsepto ng Diyos, eh, no? Kaya nga pag nagbago ka, hindi mo rin agad-agad Hindi mo agad ta- malalaman. Oh, pero Mara- ma- oh, <laughs> mararamdaman mo yun yung vibration yung nararamdaman oh. mo. Hindi mo man yun nakita physically. Yung akala mo, but parang wala naman nagbabago sa akin. Oh. Pero pagkalipas ng mga isang taon, dalawang taon, doon mo na yun, mararamdaman. Tingin mo sa nakaraan mo, ay, teka, hindi ako ganito noon na. Oh. Ito na yung resulta ko ngayon. Tsaka yung resulta, doon mo talaga malalaman yun, sa resulta. Tama. where one color stops and the other starts. They're all joined together. Now, you're never going to see that with something you call sight. Mm. Yun. Physical sight ang sinasabi dyan. Oo, oh, hindi mo may kita yun. Hindi mo may yan. Diba? Sige. Sight is a physical sensory factor. You have to go to one of your higher faculties and you develop this through understanding. Oh. Yun na yun. Ito na yun, di ba? Ano gagamitin mo dyan sa understanding? Yun na nga eh. Kasi diba? hindi naman gagana yung mata natin eh. Hindi niya kayang ano eh. Oo. Yung yung level of frequency ng physical sight natin, hindi, hindi kayang hindi nakita yan. Hindi niya nakipot doon kasi hindi Oo. na yung physical eh. 
Ang mm-hmm. makikita lang yan, yung mga physical din, oh. ang makikita niya. Pero pagdating dun sa mas matataas na level, level of energy, hindi na kaya. Hindi na makita. Ngayon, papaywanag dyan ni, Ma- ni Myron, ni, ni Bob Proctor, kung paano natin ano? makikita. O, oh, kung paano natin makikita yan. O, oh, gamit yung hindi physical sight natin. You start to understand. So you see, the part of us that we cannot see and the part we can yeah. see is all the same. This is just the flip side of the coin of this. Spirit always manifests through its polar opposite. We have the ability right here to tap in to this great power that I choose to refer to as spirit and we can tap in with an intellect and we can cause this power to literally move into form into something we call an idea. That idea must literally move into something we refer to as results. Result. You see, both science and theology clearly indicate nothing is created or destroyed. The only thing you can do is cause change. it to change. Now, yeah. this particular pro. And sabi nila yun, yung ano daw ang constant lang talaga. Change. Change. Yun lang. Nananatili. <laughs> Yun change. <laughs> Galing, you know? Hindi mo na Irony. Kung hindi mo naiintindihan yun, eh, malilito ka eh. Mm-hmm. The program is about prosperity. And when we think of prosperity, money plays a very large role. But of course, so do relationships and so does the health of our body. But let's go back and think about money for a moment. Now, when you think about money, money is really an idea. You say, that's money. No, money is an idea. It's manifest on paper. Now, paper used to be wood. I remember when I was a little boy, I lived way up in Mishima Cotton Harbor. That's about three wigwams this side of the North Pole. It's a little north of King Garden, I think. But at any rate, when I lived up there, I'd watch them take these large logs out on flat cars on the railroad. And I remember people telling me that they were going to make paper out of it. And I thought, how do you make paper out of a tree? It didn't seem to make sense. Well, hmm. you alter the vibratory rate of the energy that's called wood, and pretty soon it's called paper. And then you put ink on it, and now we call it money. Now let's think about this money for a moment. If it can be neither created nor destroyed, it must already be here. If we can't destroy it, if heat will cause the energy that we call water to move into an etheric state, I would imagine heat would cause what we call money to move into an etheric state. And there it goes. Now where is it? You say it's gone, it's not gone, still here. You see, you'll never see it on the level it's on now with your physical sensory factor sight. But if you use your intellect and develop understanding, you'll know that it's still here. What we want to do is cause it to move into form. Now that's just about as bizarre as anything you'll ever hear. <laughs> to some people's ears. But I'm going to tell you, it's just as true as anything you'll ever hear if you understand natural laws. And what I'm talking about is moving your mind into a higher vibration, developing a higher consciousness, and you can literally attract all the good that you want. You see, money is literally attracted to us, or it's repelled. Now, on first one... Diba, may naririnig ka ng mga ano, ang pera daw. Pag nagkaroon ka ng pera, i-amplify lang yan kung sino ka. Oo. Ibig sabihin, parang ang pera, neutral. Oo. Pero nung malaman natin, ang pera, hindi siya neutral, mabuti siya. Oo. Kasi di ba nung una nga, currency ng pera, gold. Oo, oh, noon. Yung pinakaunang ano, currency ng ano, yaman, gold. Basihan ng kayamanan. Oo. Nung sinabi doon ng Diyos, ang gold ay mabuti. Ibig sabihin, yung idea ng pera, pagkakaroon ng pera, mabuti, mabuti. yun. <clears throat> Kaya yung nagsasabi na ang pera neutral, sabi nga ni Myron, ma- maganda ng pakinggan, pero hindi totoo. <laughs> Di ba? Oo. Kasi, <clears throat> pwedeng gamitin ng pera sa masama, lalo na yung mga masasamang tao. Oo. Pero talaga, ang nature daw ng pera, mabuti. Mabuti. Kaya dito, sinasabi ni, ni Bob Proctor na ang pera ay hindi siya physical, spiritual siya. Diyan. Oo. Spiritual ang pera. Kaya nga kung iisipin mo, di ba, yung... May, may magandang narinig rin ako yung mayroon yung, yung $100 bill na pera at saka yung isang penny. Pagka kinumpute mo yung physical nun na kung magkano yung gawa ng pera at saka yung ano, mas mahal, mas pa, mahal yung, pa yung penny. Oo, kasi bakal yun eh. Isang papel lang eh. <laughs> Pero bakit mas mahal yung ano? Value ng papel. Value ng papel ng isang daan. Ay, nung 
1 dollar sa penny. Mas mali siya ng 90%, di ba? Oo. Kasi hindi physical ang pera, spiritual. Mm. Yung idea, yun yung yung idea. idea. Oo. Nang pagkaka-value ng pera. Kasi unang-una, kahit maurmura yung pagkakagawa doon sa papel na 'yon, ano 'yun eh? Uh, convenient 'yun eh. Oo. 'Yun ang pinakaano doon yung mayroon kang convenient. Pero yung magkaroon ka ng isang milyong barya, hindi mo mabubuhat 'yun eh. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> kagaya yung convenient na magkaroon ka ng isang milyong do- papel. Oo. Kaya, yung ang, ang, ang value nun, yung convenience. Hindi nga yun eh. Ngayon nga, digital pa eh. Ayun ang mas matindi. O, diba? Hindi talagang, mo na kailangan ng papel. Talagang invisible yun. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, mas may value Nakasulat talaga yun. Nakasulat lang yun sa ledger. Oo, sa ledger lang. ba diba? diba? Ano lang, transaction hmm. history lang kailangan mo eh. Hmm. Kaya kung may isip mo, ang pera, hindi talaga siya physical. Spiritual o hindi talaga, siya. oo. Idea. Kaya tama yung sabi dito nino. Money Ngayon lang nag-manifest yan ha, na ang pera hindi physical kasi yung mga bitcoin, oh. yung mga crypto, hindi naman physical mga yan eh. Mga magwa pa sa mga susunod na panahon ng anong klase ng pera eh. Hindi, oh, hindi baka meron pa, hindi baka pa lang mamanip. Oh, oh. Kasi yung pera natin na physical ngayon, ano yan, yung lumang modelo na yan. Oo, oh, luma, yung mga cash, yung mga coins. Oo, oh, yung mga cash coins. Grabe no. Tsaka dahil nga spiritual yung pera, hindi siya yung basta nakukuha mo basta-basta eh. Oo. Oh, oh. Ina-attract mo talaga dapat, dapat siya. Dapat i-attract mo. Pumupunta siya dun sa mga bagay na naka-attract siya. Oo. Oh. Tama. Diba? Kasi spiritual yan. Kaya kung, mag, kung ang pag-iisip mo nasa spiritual level, mas marami kang perang mapuproduce. Tingnan mo yung mga nasa physical na level. Yung nasa pinakamababang oh. level. Paano nila kinukuha yung pera? Ninanakaw nila. Di ba? Oo. Oh. Uh, kung ano-ano, niloloko nila yung tao para Hindi sila makapag-create pera. ng ano. Yun. Para makakuha ka ng pera, makapag-produce ka ng pera, kailangan mo ng idea. para ma-attract yung pera na yun. Ngayon, kailangan mo ng pag-iisip. Hindi lang basta pag-iisip, kailangan creative na pag-iisip para makalikha. Ibig sabihin dito, kung hindi kaya, ito na yung sinasabi ni Bob Proctor na yung mga bagay na hindi natin nakikita sa pamagitan ng physical na mata, ang gagamitin natin pang kita, yung idea. Oo, oh, yung intellectual yun. na insight. Sa pamamagitan yun ng isip, Oh, nga, isip yun. Babalik pa rin tayo sa tanong kanina. Paano kung hindi mo maiisip kung ano isip mo? Wala kang isip. <laughs> oo, oh, di ba? Paano mo siya magagamit yung isip kung in- mo? Oo. Oh, oh. Kung itatanong sa'yo, ano ba yung tsura ng isip? Yun. Di ba? Lito ka. Kaya, meron, marami rin nagsasabi na kung ano eh, ang tao daw talaga, akala nila nag-iisip, hindi naman talaga nag-iisip. Oo. Oh, ta- Maraming mga, ma- mga professor, kagaya nila ba, proctor na, Akala ng tao nag-iisip sila pero hindi naman talaga. Oh, akala nila ginagamit na nila yung potential talaga ng isip. 27 years of my life, I can assure you that I was not magnetized to that green energy. It used to stay away from me. And now, it just keeps coming. Nilalayo ang shade. What did he say in this book? Right in the start of it. He said when money starts coming, it'll come so fast and sure, so furious, it will literally make your head spin. Good thing, eh? Now, <laughs> Let's take oh. these simple concepts that have deep meaning and let's take this other board here and build a picture. One of our intellectual factors is imagination. Another one is reason. Now, with reason, we have the ability to think. John's going to be talking about that a little later on. With our imagination, we can tap into this infinite power and we can build beautiful pictures in our mind. Now, since no one has an image of the mind, we have to make one. It's like the little boy in school. He was sitting there doodling away, drawing a picture, and the teacher says, what are you doing, son? The kid says, I'm drawing a picture of God. The teacher says, nobody's ever seen God. Well, he says, wait till I finish the picture, you know. <laughs> about a gentleman that was running a seminar in Vancouver, British Columbia. I was living and working in Chicago at the time. I at the time was prepared to go anywhere to try and find out why I changed. And Vancouver was not too far to go from Chicago. I always sort of laugh when I hear a pe- person say, oh, if you hold one, one of these seminars in the east end of the city, I'll come, but I don't want to drive across the city. 
I'd walk across the continent if I thought I could get something that would help me understand me better because I know it's my understanding of me that's going to determine the results that I get in my life, yeah. in my, ha my happiness, in my health, or in the area of wealth. Well, I flew off out to Vancouver and I had heard many speakers. I'd read many books. I had a ton of information running around my head, but I couldn't get it to fit. And I couldn't get it to fit for the same reason that some of you have never been able to get it to fit. You have no picture of in the brain cells mind. of the mind. You win. Do you know there's many psychiatrists that have problems with their patients because they're not giving them an image to work with when they're working with their mind. I have taught this idea to psychiatrists. I had a psychiatrist, Marty Cohen, out in Century City, California, tell me that he made more headway with a patient in four visits than he had previously made in four years. And the simple reason for it is he gave them order. He gave them a picture to start to work with. Well, as soon as this gentleman got up and started to speak, he was a great big gentleman by comparison to me. He and I looked like Laurel and Hardy when we worked together. But at any rate, the second he got up to speak, I knew this man knew what he was talking about. And I'm gonna tell you, I listened carefully. I went over when he was finished and I asked him, I said, could I spend a couple of hours with you? And I'll never forget him looking at his watch and telling me that he was sorry, he didn't have a couple of hours, he had to go and catch a plane. Now he said, I'd love to spend some time with you, but he said, I've got to catch a plane. And I said, well, I've got to catch a plane too, I don't mean right now. And I said, where are you going? Kinikwento dyan ni Bob Proctor yung isa pang nagturo sa kanya tungkol sa idea ng image ng isip ko. Oh. Or he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He said, where do you live? And I said, Chicago. Well, he said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I come out to hear you speak. He said, that's a long way. And I said, not for what I got. And so at any rate, I think he was impressed that I had traveled so far. He got his calendar out and I got mine out. And he told me he was going to be in Toronto in a couple of weeks. And I said, well, Toronto's only an hour from Chicago. It's just up and down. I'll come over if you'll meet with me. Well, the two of us sat down in the Skyline Hotel. And I'm going to tell you, Leland Del Bandewal taught me as much in two hours. Well, I should say two days. No, it wasn't. It was two hours. We just spent a couple of days together. But everything fell into place in just a couple of hours. He taught me more in two hours than I had learned in nine years, studying faithfully every day. And he proceeded to tell me, he said, listen, Bob, he said, there's a difference between hearing and listening. He said, you hear with your ears, you listen with your emotions. Now he said, as you sit here, he said, your mind could take a trip, but your body would stay right in front of me. Now he said, you'd hear every word I'm saying, but he said, you may not necessarily be listening. He said, if you're going to learn, you're going to have to listen. And you listen with your emotions. You've got to keep your mind with your body. No trips. Now I said, Kailangan talaga yung mga nakikita mo at nasasagap mo mga ideya, nararamdaman mo sa pamagitan ng kone. Eh. Yung ngayong pinanood mo, pinapanood mo sa akin dati na ano, na yung kailangan maramdaman mo talaga yung mga mga pinapanood mo, mga para mas ma ano may resulta. Ang ano ko naman diyan, pag aintindi ko sa sinabi ni Bob Proctor, kasi pinaliliwanag sa kanya ng doktor mm. na yon na yung pandinig mo tsaka yung pagkakarinig mo magkaiba yon. Mm -mm. Yung tenga kasi natin, yung physical na tenga. Mm -mm. Ang ibig niya sabihin may tenga tayo na hindi physical. Oo. Anong klaseng tenga yun? Emotional na tenga yun. Na kapag yun ang ginamit ng pandinig, yung emotional Oo, na yung emotion. na naikinig ka, hindi mo makakalimutan. Mm -mm. Pero kung pumasok lang sa tenga mo, may tendency na makalimutan mo yan. Yung ngayon, kailangan maramdaman mo talaga din eh. Oo. Kagaya niyan, yung halimbawa, yung pag mga kanta, di ba? Hmm. Pag mga kanta na hindi mo naman isinasa puso eh. Hindi Naririnig mo, mo lang, hindi di ba? Mo tatandaan. Hindi mo matatandaan eh. Pero kapag yung kantang yun nagustuhan mo dahil naramdaman mo, okay. naranasan mo, di ba? Tumatak sa ano, sa puso. Eh, kaya pala yung sa Biblia, di ba may nakasulat doon na, na yung puso may pandinig. Oo, tama yun. Di ba? Yan pala yun. <clears throat> yan yung magkaibang klase ng pandinig. Oo. Meron kasi na akala mo, nakikinig ka pero hindi, hindi mo, mo na intindihan hindi mo maintindihan oo kasi hindi mo pa naman experience yun eh tsaka hindi oo tsaka hindi mo na experience at hindi mo talaga nakikita oo <laughs> kaya bagamat narinig mo yun yung ganong paliwanag hangga't hindi mo yun 
na isa sa puso at hindi mo siya ma-experience. Oo. Diyan mamaya-maya ipapakita niya kung ano ibig sabihin ng nakikinig sa pakikinig. Yung pakikinig ng tenga at pakikinig ng emosyon. Emosyon. Gamit ang emosyon. Tuloy natin. If you do that, odds are pretty good you'll learn. And he says, there's a vast difference between learning and gathering information. He said, you see, all the way through school, we were encouraged to read, remember, and repeat. Read, remember, and repeat. And if you were able to do that fairly well, you were given the mortarboard of the sheepskin. And they said you had learned. Doesn't necessarily mean you've learned anything at all. You might have learned how to develop your memory, but that might have been the end of it. Now, I'm not saying no one learns doing that. Some do. But he said learning is not gathering information. Naalala ko tuloy yung sinabi dyan ni ano eh, Arvin Urubie. Sabi ni Arvin, hindi ko naman kayo bini, binibenta ng libro para basahin yung libro ko at alamin ko ano yung nandun. Sabi niya, binibenta ko kayo ng libro para masana yung utak nyo na magbasa ng libro. Oh. Diba? Hindi, hindi kung ano yung ano, yung laman ng libro sabi niya ganun. Kasi sa pagbabasa pala, ano yun eh, nade-develop yung utak natin eh. Yun ang pinaka-exercise ng isip. Yun, yung exercise yung pagbabasa. Isipin mo na lang, ano? Bakit Biblia ang ginawa ng Diyos? Yun. Bakit aklat? <laughs> Oo, oh, bakit libro? <laughs> bakit libro, di ba? Samantalang kung napaka-advance na ng Diyos, eh, no? Bakit hindi digital ka agad? Bakit hindi yung cellphone ka agad? Oo, hindi no, audio no, agad. Oo, oh, noon nga, sa bato pa eh, talaga eh. Sa bato pa. <laughs> Sinusulat eh, no? So, titindi yun sa bato. Di ba? Pero ngayon sa libro. Kasi... Sab- yun talaga yung pinaka-powerful na paraan para matuto. Ma-develop yung utak natin. Oh. Yung magbasa, kahit anong basahin mo, syempre, mamimili ka yung may ano ka talaga. Yung may may bebenepisyo yung, yung yun. sarili mo. Oo. Diba, gusto mong maging engineer, di magbasa ka ng mga libro tungkol sa engineer. Yun, oo. Gusto mong matuto ng maging magaling sa mat, basahin mo yung mga mag- mathematical books. Diba? Oo. Magbasa. Yun ang ano talaga. Gusto mo yung mama, hindi yung mga librong pampayaman ang basahin mo. Yun. Gusto mong maging malusog, yung mga libro na ano. Kaya lang, yung iba karamihan yata, pocketbook din na base. <laughs> ano, oh. develop naman dun sa yung pagiging emotional mo. Yun, oo. Kaya tingnan mo, maraming mga, lalo na yung ano, madadrama ang buhay. Nako, <laughs> may hirap. sa pocketbook yun eh. <laughs> <laughs> diba? Masyadong maantig, ay, madaling maantig oh, ang oh, puso. Oh. Kapag Kasi gano'n ang binabasa mo. Dahil yun ang kinukonsume nila. Ang nade-develop mo yung emosyon mo. Pag, pag, pagiging sensitibo niya. Oo. Hindi ka gaya kapag utak ang sensitibo sa atin, di ba? Napakabilis sumagap ng ay, mga bagong idea yun. Oo, tapos yung emosyon nakokontrol niya. Yun, nakokontrol ng isip yung emosyon. Ang problema kasi kapag yung emosyon yung nade-develop natin kisa sa isip, makukonker ng emosyon yung isip natin. Oo. Nag-iisip ka na sa pamamagitan ng emosyon. Yun. Oo. Kaya nga dyan, kung hindi mo alam yung image, Is, ng, image ng isip ng isip at emosyon, yun na nga yung conscious tsaka subconscious. Oo. Hindi mo maintindihan kung ba't mo ginagawa yung mga bagay na yan, Tama. ginagawa mo. Kaya huwag kayong malilito ha, although emosyon yung tinatalakay ni Bob Proctor ngayon dito. Oo. Isip pa rin yun. Isip pa rin yun. Parte yun ng isip. Mm-mm. Tuloy natin. Learning is when you consciously entertain an idea, you get emotionally involved in the idea, you step out and act on the idea, and you improve the results in some area of your life. Now he said, this is the name of the game, Bob. He says it's results. Pretty good teacher a long time ago said, by their fruits, you'll know them. In other words, you can always tell a person's level of awareness by the results they're getting. If the results aren't there, they have no one to blame but themselves. Lino mo yan eh, no? Pero maraming tao hindi matanggap yan eh. Oo. Hindi nila naunawaan na yung kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanila ngayon, resulta yan nung 5 years na kung ano yung pinag-iisip nila. Oo. Tapos ang sasabihin pa, inuhusgahan nyo naman kami. Kaya tama yung sabi ng Bible eh. Kayo ang umahatol sa sarili nyo. Yung gawa mo, yun ang ahatol sa'yo. Oo. Di ba? Linaw, ano grabe. Yun? Kung ano yung ginawa mo, yan yung magiging resulta mo eh. Yun ang Aha. hatol. Galing. Ngayon, paano mo yung nagawa? Inisip mo muna yun, kaya mo yung nagawa. Yun. E kung inisip mo yung mga bagay na ikaw unlad mo, di ba? Oo. Kagaya ng panonood ng mga ganitong video. Kaya nga, sabi dyan ni Bob Proctor eh, yung result ng isang tao, malalaman mo dun kung gaano Taas, yung level, level of awareness niya. Yun. Level of energy niya. O, halimbawa, yung kumikita ng 
5,000 per month. Hindi ibig sabihin na gusto niya yun mm. na kumita ng 5,000 per month. Kasi yun lang yung level of awareness niya. Yun. Na hindi niya alam kung paano kumita ng 10,000 per month. Di ba? Oo. Ngayon yung 10,000 per month, hindi dahil sa gusto niya yun, hindi niya lang alam yung awareness paano kumita ng 20,000. Oo. Bawat result, may level of awareness. So, ibig mong sabihin, ano yan, hindi, hindi uso dyan yung salitang ang swerte mo naman. Naku po. <laughs> Kahit sino ang successful na tao, pag tinanong mo nang ganyan, hindi ka sasagutin na sinuwerte lang siya. Oo. Oh, oh. Success is a habit. Yun. Kung maunawaan mo yon na ano ba yung habit? Yung palagi mong ginagawa. Yun. Yung palagi mong ginagawa. Yun yung magiging success. Kaya pala laging sinasabi ng mga successful na tao na magsimula ka sa maliliit na success. Tama. Galing ano? Success is a habit. Tapos yung naalala ko yung sinabi mo oh. na si Jordan Peterson, di ba? Oo. Oh, oh. Ba't ba pinahalagahan niya yung minsan niya lang ginagawa? Ayun, oo oh, nga. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos yung palagi niyong ginagawa, parang yun yung pa yung ayaw niyo. Oo. Oh, oh. Yun yung kinayayamutan niyo kagaya nung pagtatrabaho. Sa madaling salita, ka. yun talaga yung mahalaga, yung araw-araw mong oh, ginagawa. Oo, yun ang mahalaga. Kaya kung... Kung ayaw mo nang mag-empleyado, ayaw mo nang ginagawa mo araw-araw, mag-isip ka na ngayon, paano ka makakaalis dyan. Yun, oo. Tapos, magpasalamat ka na may trabaho ka. Yun. Dapat Kasi... araw-araw excited ka kahit lunes, martes, basta excited ka araw-araw. Na pumasok sa trabaho. Kasi yung ganong klase ng emosyon, yung excited ka, nagpapasalamat ka lagi, yun yung mga dahilan na makakaisip ka ng idea. Paano ka makaalis dyan? Bibigyan Yun. ka ng awareness. Yung gratitude. Oo. Kasi kung wala ang gratitude, nasa lower vibration ka eh. Walang papasok na awareness dyan eh. Oo. Lagi ka lang magre-reklamo. Ben, lunis na naman. Papasok na naman <laughs> ang trabaho. Nakakapagod. Overtime, hindi binabayaran. Oo. <laughs> Kaya sasabihin ng Diyos sa'yo, ano Ben, reklamo ng reklamo to. Meron na nga eh. <laughs> Diyos din talaga magbibigay, di ba? Oo, tama yan. Doon man gagaling yung, ano, yung energy eh. Yung, kung hindi ka nga nagpapasalamat sa mga bagay na meron ka ngayon, eh. Sa araw-araw na ginagawa mo, yun yung magiging result mo. Kung reklamador ka, yun yung magiging result mo. Puro reklamo rin makukuha mo. Tama. Tuloy natin yeah. yan. Tuloy natin. Maganda to. For 27 years, I blamed everybody. I blame my parents. <laughs> I blame my brother, my sister. <laughs> Rauwi na naman tating nakakarinig talaga ako yun. Ganyan na ganyan din kasi tayo dati, no? Yung result... <laughs> yung resulta natin, isinisisi natin sa ibang tao. <laughs> kasi nagihirap tayo kasi ibang tao ko ni eh. Niloko tayo eh. Oo, oh, iniscam tayo ni ganito. Oo. Oh. Pero ang totoo sa eh, lahat ng ginawa natin, tayo may may gawa tayo talaga. Tayo talaga may gawa. Tayo may nag eh. Tayo ang accountable dun, walang iba. Meron pa nga nagsasabi, ibig mo sabihin, pati yung nirape. Gusto niya yun, di ba? May mga ganun pa oh, may mga ganun katwiran eh. Iisipin mo maigi, kung gusto niya yun, nasa kanya na yun, kung gusto niya talaga. Oo. Oh. Pero kung hindi mo kontrolado ang sitwasyon, kung hindi mo kontrolado ang, ang nangyari sa'yo, hindi mo yun dapat isisi doon. Kasi limbawa, na-rape ka, na-trauma ka, hindi naman dahilan yun para hindi ka na magpatuloy. Eh. Totoo yan. Kasi pwede mo pa rin paguhin yung kinabukasan mo, hanggat buhay ka eh. Oo, hanggat buhay ka. Kahit pa ba nabuntis ka, kahit ng anak kayo. Iba, sinisisi dun sa anak eh. Isinisisi dun sa nang rape, kaya nasira yung buhay. Oo. At, <laughs> totoo. <laughs> Hindi naman namin inaano yung mga rape victim. Oo. Kaya lang kasi, yung buhay, sabi nga ng Diyos eh. Binigyan tayo ng buhay, hindi yan para mabuhay lang eh. Binigyan tayo, dahil may option tayo eh. Tama. ba diba? Ngayon, anong gagawin mo doon sa sitwasyon na yun? Halimbawa, na-rape ka nga, hindi mo gusto yun eh. Oo, oo nandun na ka. tayo. Anong gagawin mo? Magbumukbong ka? Magpapakamatay ka? Ngayon, sino kawawa? Di ba? Ikaw din. Pero mas marami yung mga taong trauma na ano, mas marami ko nakikita na yun pa yung mga talaga nagiging successful. Yun, oo. Yung mga nakaranas ng matitindi talaga. Oo, mo. matitinding pinagdaanan sa buhay. Mm. Sila yun na... Sila pa yung na talagang kapag ka nagbago, sobrang laki ng ano, improvement. Kasi nga, para kang nasa ano na eh, nasa dead end na eh. Oo. Oh. Wala ka ng ibang gagawin kundi butasin yung, yung limit na meron ka eh, di ba? 
Oh, yung limitasyon na meron ka, wala ka ng ibang gagawin, kundi ano yun, lampasan yun. Narinig ko nga sa mga ibang speaker eh. O, parang, kumbaga sa ano, down ka na, nasa lupa ka na. Hindi ka na talaga bababa eh. Nandun ka na sa pinakadulo. <laughs> wala na, na oo. Oh, oh. ka, dulo ka pa rin. Oo. Oh, oh. Hindi ka na bababa. Ang tanging gagawin mo na lang, umakyat. umakyat. Pataas. Yung iba hindi eh. Lalo nilang idinada pa yung sarili nila. Oo, dinuduktok yung sarili nila. Tapos isinisisi dun sa sitwasyon nila. Kaya nga, na-rape siya. Kaya naman, nalugi sila, na nakawan mm-hmm. sila, namatayan sila. Ginagawa pa nilang dahilan yun para lalong hindi na umahon. umahon. Kaya dito, ang ganda nito yung sasabihin ni Bob Proctor dyan. I blame my employer. Dagdag ko lang. Kaya tama yung sabi ni Andrew Tate. Eh. Naalala ko na naman eh. Na miserable ka. Hirap kang umano. Isipin mo na lang yung araw-araw doon sa may gera. Oo. Oh, diba? Grabe yan. Isipin mo yung buhay noon na araw-araw nasa gera. Isipin mo yung mga taong walang kamay tsaka walang paa. Yun. Isipin mo yung mga hindi nakakita. Isipin diba? mo yung... <laughs> yun lang eh. Doon lang sa pag-iisip na yun. Paggamit lang ng isip ng mga ganong bagay. Diba? Oo. Oh. Hindi pa ba sapat yun para ano, para para mabigyan ka ng kwan? Para lumaban ka sa buhay, yun. umahon ka, umahon ka. Kasi lahat naman tayo talaga nalulog mo. Okay. Oo, oh, diba? lahat tayo dumadaan sa mga ganong pangyayari. Iba-iba nga lang ang sitwasyon. Mm-hmm. Iba-ibang sitwasyon lang. Lawyers, I blame the commanding officers I had in the Navy. It was never me, always them. They weren't doing enough for me. They weren't doing it right. The truth was, I wasn't facing up to the truth about me. I was never studying. I didn't know anything about myself. And as a result, the results indicated it. I was unhappy, sick, and broke. Now, he said, Bob, he said, you're going to have to alter some ideas in your mind. But he said, to do that, you're going to have to have a picture to work with. And he told me about a doctor in San Antonio, Texas, Dr. Truman Fleet. He started the concept therapy movement. He said he attempted to teach the healing arts, and he ran into a problem. He said the medical profession that he was a part of were te- treating symptoms or effects. They were not treating causes. And he said, if you're ever going to enjoy health, you must treat the whole person. Now that's called holistic healing. Holistic healing pala tawag doon. Oh, yung sinasabi niya si Dr. Truman. Fleet. Ano yun eh, doktor ng physical therapist. Mm-mm. Kaya sinabi niya dyan, sinabi ni Bob Proctor na naisip niya na yung kinabibilangan niyang medisina ngayon, yung modern medicine na kinabibilangan niya, ginagamot yung effect, hindi yung cost. Ano ba yung effect? Yung katawan. Oo. Hindi yung cost ng, ano ba yung nagkukos ng sakit. Kasi nga, ang sakit, karamihan sa mga sakit na nakukuha natin, hindi naman physical eh. Na kung pag-aaralan natin, yung sakit na nakukuha natin, nagmumula yan sa isip rin natin. Oo. Sa mga ano, bad hormones. Di ba? O, kapag nag-isip ka ng hindi maganda, kapag nag-isip ka ng negatibo, merong pinuproduce yung katawan natin na negatibong likido rin. Mm-hmm. Na yun ang sisira sa katawan natin. Nagdudulot ng sakit. How many of you are familiar with holistic healing? Quite a few. Well, that's where you heal the whole person. You see, you're a triune being. You live simultaneously on three planes of understanding. Every one of us are the same. Every one of us. The difference is in our results. But the same here. And that's where it all starts. And that's what we want to understand. When we walk into that office where the broad loom is up to our cheeks and there's a great big oak desk and a battery of secretaries, that person is not that much better than you are. I don't care how big their car is, how much money they've got in the bank. I don't care how pretty they are. They're no better than you and they're no better than me. See, our problem is we have been living strictly with our sensory factors and never with our higher level of understanding. If a person's skin is a different color, we say they're different. If a person lives on the other side of an imaginary line, we say they're different. If a person speaks a different language, we say they're different. If a person is a different sex, we say they're different. Are they? No. They appear different to our sight. But when we develop a higher understanding, we're going to find out that we're all the same. And when we start to grasp that, then we can start to take action on the results we want. As we see a person getting better results, we can watch and see how they're getting them, and then we can do what, we're, what they're doing. Napoleon Hill says it pays to know how to buy knowledge. I'm going to tell you the best money you have ever invested is in this seminar. And I'm not saying that because I'm selling the run. 
And I'm not saying that because John Salmon or John's done it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that because I've studied thousands of seminaries, and what we've done is take the very best out of them all and put them in this. When this was introduced to you early this morning, this was advertised as the most effective personal development seminar in the world today. It is, so far as I know. And I'm going to tell you, I've been to a lot of them. And it is because we give you a picture and then we show you how to change things. Well, Dr. Fleet said, if we're going to see health, we're going to have to give a person an image of the other side of their personality. And he said, since no one's ever seen the mind, I'm going to make a picture of the mind. Now he said, let this represent the mind. Then he said, let this represent the thing that we've given all of our attention to now, up till now, the body. And he says, it's this thing here that moves into action and causes the results that we get. If we're going to change what we do, or if we're going to change our behavior, we're definitely going to have to change what's going on in here. If we're going to change what's going on in here, we're going to have to understand how it functions. And as he pointed out, there are two <coughs> sections to the mind, joined together, but different in their method of operation. And he referred to this as the conscious mind, and this as the subconscious mind. Now, if you look on page six of your action planner, you'll see that drawing. The day Leland Val van der Waal drew that on the opposite side of a placemat in the coffee shop of the Skyline Hotel on Dixon Road in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, I'm going to tell you my life changed. I've put that drawing on the board thousands and thousands of times, and periodically when I do, I hear people snicker. But I'm going to tell you, if they stick around, they don't snicker for long. Because what it does, it starts to trigger all kinds of light in their mind. You've heard, let there be light, let there be a higher consciousness, let there be an awareness. Well, what we've given you here is a picture to start working with. It's not my picture. It's not even Thruman Fleets. It's our picture. The second you've got it in your mind, it's yours. Mm -hmm. No one can lay claim to something like this, but we can all use it. And we yeah. are all the same. I don't care how different you may appear to be to the person beside you, you and the person beside you are exactly the same. Now it's understanding of how this functions that makes it different. Now if you'll flip over in your exercise book, your action planner to page eight. And I would suggest that you follow this really closely. You could be sitting in your den or your family room and just watching this and the book stuck away somewhere. That'd be a terrible error. You'd be wasting your time. And you know, time wasted, you never get back. Now, of course, you only have to pay once, you see. If you've wasted the past, you've already paid the price. You don't have to pay twice. There's one some consolation to it. But I would suggest you get the book out and put three different ideas, or it's one idea broken down into three different parts. And as you take a look on page eight, the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the body, there are some very key parts to that. On the top drawing on page eight, we say this is the part of your mind that thinks or reasons. Thinks or this reasons. is where your free will lies. Viktor Frankl wrote a magnificent book called Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a Jewish psychiatrist who spent the war years in a German concentration camp. And you know, I don't suppose anyone has ever been subjected to more abuse, intellectually and physically, than someone in one of those camps. I certainly couldn't even imagine it, even although he wrote it very well. But he pointed out, he said, regardless of how they chained us and abused us, they could never take control of our mind unless we chose to let them. He did not choose to let them. Viktor Frankl was a courageous man. He's lived to talk about it. He's lived to teach about it. And I'm going to tell you, he's a wise person. That's where your free will lies. You don't have to follow anybody else. We say the conscious mind can accept or reject any idea. Now, there is no person or circumstance that can cause you to think thoughts or ideas you do not choose. They are the most important lines that you might find in this entire program. Now, what I'm going to do 